you know, I love the game of football, and this is a place that loves football. So it's like the perfect match for me, a uh, perfect match for my family. And I, I think that uh, I think that we can be what, what we're expecting to be. Boys, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I'm your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor. As you know, is in Mexico. Delaney sits in today and is my co-host once again because the, the cat is an absolute stud and we have a lot of fun. We talk the Masters. We talk UFC 300. We talk what's going on in the sports world. We, re, we recap a little bit of the Barstool mini golf tournament last week. We have some fun. We have a couple of dad tips for you as well. And what you're here for, the Coach Rule episode, that is also... Uh, and in the later part of the show, our boys do a great job of putting this together. If you're watching on Rumble or YouTube right now, make sure you're subscribed. There are also chapters in the YouTube. There are also timestamps of where the conversation is. If you want to jump ahead and skip around, you can find all of that stuff in the description. We cannot thank you guys enough for the support. I love just being around town and people are, oh, the boy. And they just give you a subtle little dap. Seriously, your guys' support means the world. Thank you guys. Enjoy this episode. Our spring tour content is also out. So if you're a Husker fan showing up for this episode, Dylan Rayola will be later on this morning. Florida State will be later in the week. We have Oregon next week. We have Alabama after that. We have some information of the Alabama live show in this episode. Again, if you're around Tuscaloosa, come join us in the live show. We have yet to announce where we'll be performing for our Nashville live show. So stay up to date with us on that, uh, on our social channels at Bus and WTB. Again, thank you for the support. Big hugs, tiny kisses, and I also address everybody here that talks about the intro song. We talk about the intro song. We address the intro stuff because trust me, we see all of your guys' comments. Thank you guys for throwing them in there. Again, big hugs, tiny kisses. Enjoy this episode with Bustin' with the Boys, myself and Delaney, and Coach Matt Rule. We'll we'll go throw it. We good. Hey. What? Oh, got you. I, yeah, I forgot you. Our boy Phil got us right on the audio. Everybody listening right now, like Mitch has been in the lab. We had this cat named Phil over to help with some audio. I don't know, Mitch. What did he help us do? He got he got this whole shit back here. Got it going right, and like I don't know, he he did a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's our producer. It's our producer. It, it I was something. He, I don't know what he was doing. Sounds back like me. Here, like he, he, but he was something. like changing some some chords that 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 Blasi had on that up and he, he's he's gonna make it sound good i guess all right yeah so everybody where is this dude off. from yeah, london, london he's got a sick accent too he says gnarly yeah. and shit yeah i thought he was from fucking best yeah, buy yeah switched up a couple wires for us so everybody firing off on mitch in the comments let us know how the audio sounds yo hey i got a question for you guys is my uh is my hairline falling back I mean, who said that? I'm sitting here trying to have a good Monday, and I I, I put out the video of promoting our uh, spring tour that's out right now. And dude said, "I love you, man, but we got to have a chat about the hairline get, hitting you with a three step drop out of nowhere." Yeah, I mean, it's uh, oh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When I was looking at my hair this morning, yeah. I'm thinking like, man, this Nutrafol or Nutrafol, I feel like it's starting to help. So Wait, I thought at the I, top, I you mean? Like, like at the top? It's yeah, because usually I'm a little dustier uh, in the corners. Yeah, I've been keeping it. It's usually like dustier in the corners. I feel like it's filling a little bit more, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm. I think that's what he's saying. Maybe I'm not reading the field correctly. JP, you had the mic. What, you feel like my hairline's getting pushed back a little bit? No, I feel like it looks similar to when I first started, which is good. Three years holding strong. And I even sent you a video of a mini golf clip. I was like, hey, the cut looks nice. Right. So I appreciate that, man. What's your dad hairline look like? Gone. That's it's gonna happen then. Yeah, non-existent. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's, it's uh, it skips generation like balding and receding. It's usually like on your mom's side. Her dad is usually how you take after in your genetics. Gotcha. Oh. So. Gotcha. I very rarely remember him. I'm not. Yeah, my dad's is gone like that thirty rack of bush light he had at the house over the weekend. Yeah, I can't really tell. I don't look at you like that, so I don't know if it's pushback or not. I mean, it's it, you got the Ronald McDonald, but Made other that than that, comment in year one. 
McDonald's. Yeah, what the? <laughs> said the Ronald McDonald's. The M. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it look good on you. Look at my shit. It's the, oh, that hairline is good. Delaney got the X axis. <laughs> my hairline is straight. Why? You got them grays coming in. Oh, I'm grayed up. That's from stress, though. From what? Stress yeah, in has- daily life. <laughs> Stress the fuck out around here, man. Also, in the uh, comments, I was asking Delaney before he came on, but he wasn't familiar with the intro songs. No. People fire off about these intro songs. And, I, you know, you see comments now like, oh, they don't even talk about it. They won't even address it. <laughs> it's getting loud. <laughs> yeah, people, the majority wants the old intro, the old intro back. Yeah, you're going to have to play it for me. I got to hear. I got to hear what, what's, what's the We wasn't going to change it, but they call, they call uh, JP it, wanted to switch it up. Play both. <laughs> no, play both, though. I want to hear both. I got to hear. Yeah, where's the, uh, we can play them. They call, they call the it the phone. Earn Intro. Yeah, the, the Earn Intro. The mayor. So Ernest mm. made us an intro, and it mm. is a banger. It's an awesome. Hey, I know we switch up the intro songs, but there is one thing we don't switch up. And that's the Chevy trucks. And that's the Chevy Silverado. Plus with the boys is presented by Chevy. This is a Chevy truck podcast, just like JP said. Gritty and determined, dependable. Just like JP reminded me that we have this ad read with Chevy trucks. Chevy trucks are the greatest trucks ever built. And our good friends at Chevrolet have been a big part of the Bustin family and even in our personal lives. As you know, your boy rocks the sleek black ZR2 Chevy Silverado. A uh, longtime awesome partner of the show, a truck with commanding and unstoppable grit, legendary capability, and dependability as well. So find out for yourself, like so many of our boys, head to Chevy.com, check out all the Chevy truck grit, build your own Silverado, and check out what current offers are out there during Chevy truck season. For do-it-yourself projects, uh, to off-road trips, off-road adventures, tailgates, off-road trip, whatever your thing is, it all starts with a Chevy truck. Um, all right, yeah, so this, we had Ernest, he had this little riff for us, oh, just off the top, freestyled it, played it for us, recorded it on a phone, rocked it. It's Killed a great it. song, yeah. Here, put your, uh, put your headphones on so you can hear it. I don't think I can hear. Me neither. I don't think it's going to come through your headphones. It's not going to come through our headphones? I hear something, though. It's from my computer. Oh. Can you turn it up? There we go. Betting on a game. No woman's gonna tell us what to do. Now Bill over here. Just drink beer and make a nice noise. Baby, I'm hanging with the fellas. With the boys, bro. The ne- hey, you was on the recording. Oh. Let me hear the new one now. All right, now the new one. What's everybody laughing about? <laughs> I see how the UFC is today. If you were picking yep. out fighters, if you were in your prime again, who were? When did we did? When did y'all switch it? Oh, uh, like a month ago. Who else is in the that top under five? <laughs> In that head. Uh, what my opinion will be, the first one is more personal to me. I feel like it's like the boys. More authentic to more authentic. The yeah. Then the second one is like we grown. We are we doing tour. It's like, you know what I'm saying? We He's moving around. Tours. Like it just feel more hyped up, like more lively. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I kind of if you want to just add both of them, man, keep the original one in the front and then on y'all end out, play the, the so new the one. The thought process behind the 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 newer one is you heard that undertone on the the like the Beginning. cliffhanger clip. Like mm-hmm. you talk about something that's, you know, he was talking about a bar fight or whatever Biz being right there was talking about. You kind of have that undertone song, like an earned song. You can't, you can't do find that. like an undertone that's kind of like, okay, this is, it could either be serious, it could be emotional, it could be funny, whatever the case is. So the thought was to have the undertone song and then it rides into the canned intro where that song is playing. Uh-huh. And that band, Quaker City Nighthawk, shout out the boys, we used that one, some of Adam's blues, right? 
and then we use their song Cold Blues. That was for the, he for makes every, it in. For the people who listened to the Delaney Walker very first ever episode. Those first songs, the intro song was Cold Blues by Quaker City Nighthawks. Oh, okay. So when we when we pulled this some of Adam's blues, it was like pulling from Quaker City Nighthawks, the band we used initially. Yeah. And we kind of switched it up because I was wanting like a cliffhanger clip at the beginning versus you just start off with the intro song. Yeah. But everybody being so loud in the comments, you're kind of thinking you got to bring back. You know, I'm hitting up Ern. I'm like, hey, we might need a, a clean version yeah. of this. And then just just drop it in. I mean, you, yeah, I, I think they may be right because I'm, I'm a Power fan, right? And we, we watch, I watch a lot of Power and they changed the intro song and people went ape shit and they changed it back the next week. Like, because it was like a big key factor. Like the song was similar, but not similar and people did not like it. So I, I can understand why people are throwing a fit on y'all changing the song. Like, there'll be people coming in be like, oh, Signing in just for the uh, old intro group, for the old intro. Yeah, group. yeah. I mean, I would throw it back. Just have them do a cleaner version where you feel like that's that can play right out for everything or just use both. Shit, fuck it. Oh, hang on a second. We got to... Ooh. Let's see if we can use this. <laughs> oh, it's just more, hey, more and more people... It's about to be Will vs. Taylor. More and more people drop it out. When is it? June 24th or 25th? I think I, I'm going to be there. I, I, gotta, I know I'll report sometime in July, so. I'm, yeah, I'm, gonna, it's going to be during the downtime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, oh, shit, I'm going to find some. I'm, if I got to find a cat off the Las Vegas Strip, I'll do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go find the best chugger around. Come around this thing. Yeah, I'm gutted, bro. I'm gutted. Oh, that would have been damn. That's that hurt though. It did. That hurt because we wanted to build. We I know. Moved it actually up. A I know. Days I know. We had uh, we met with Jason out in out in Vegas in the Super Bowl to kind of like talk through. Hey, how can we logistically pull this off? Because we'd like to do it around the collab with you guys because they had like a a beer or something. Yeah. They do out in Philly. Mm -hmm. And um. It would have been biblical, but fuck, we moved around. We we, I mean, we were hitting them up. We hit them up a couple of times last week, and we didn't hear nothing back. I was telling Taylor, I was like, man, I don't got a good feeling, bro. We didn't have a good feeling about it. I do appreciate him calling. Oh, yeah, that's real. Text. Instead of sending a text, that's some real homie shit right there. Oh, that oh, sucks, though, bro. What about it? No hockey players? You can't get no hockey players? We no get like, people. We just, we want it like I know what you wanted. I, get, I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you want. You ain't even got to say it. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> let's get back right. Yeah, yeah, man. We get it, get back in. We, we got, got a show, to man. Get, get out your feelings. Slap. Delaney's favorite character is Tariq. Yeah, no, fuck no. <laughs> he, is, he, I don't like Tariq. Bro, you, so I, you watch Power. I stopped watching after season three. Yeah, the new book of Tyreek and shit is trash, but... As I saw his character start to get bigger, I'm like, man, what are we doing? I knew it. I'm like, he gonna kill Ghost. Because yeah. Ghost, Ghost and Tommy really my favorite characters, oh. period. I mean, Ghost dead now, and Tommy's still wilding like a motherfucker, crazy yeah. white boy. Yeah. He he doesn't... He does, because he doesn't want to... Uh, yeah, he don't want to... Basically, here's what happened. For everybody well, listening... Because we got to cut the, the phone call. Travis Kelsey just called to let us know that he can't do Beer Olympics. <clears throat> that hurts. That hurts. <clears throat> hey. But hey, onward and upward. Onward and upward. We lost a good soldier. Yeah, two. Two good soldiers. Two. <laughs> It's not about what happens to you, Will. It's about how you respond. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was a brutal phone call. I bet he was sitting there kind of mulling He up. was like, ah, I'm going to do this. Maybe Fuck. he had a text written up and was like, ah, I got to call. No, nah, he probably was like sitting there like, damn, I got to call him. Because yeah. I'm sure they I'm sure some, they came through and gave him a schedule. Like, this is the only time you can probably do this, do that. And he was like, Fuck it. Got to go before training camp. Yeah. You know? He's a busy cat. He is very busy. And with uh, Dayton Taylor, like I'm sure 
it's probably hard to align everything. Every, yeah, yeah, everything of course. Everything we got going on. Because I'm sure shit just pops up. Yeah. And just, yeah. you know what I mean? You just know the feeling. Like, it's the worst feeling knowing you're about to let the boys down. Yeah, man. It's, it's oh. Especially when you, you know, you had that calendar. Yeah, when you're, like, when you're like, yeah. When you're like, hey, yeah, oh, man, yeah, we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, that should be tough when you can't do. It's twofold now. It, it almost give you that sick feeling in your stomach when you got to do those, make those calls. Like, ah, I can't do it. Ah. I know, bro. He's like, whatever you need. I might have to call him, like, if it's, like, a, a game to get into the playoffs with the Chiefs. and like, hey, I need you to blow it. Nah, we need some Taylor Swift tickets, man. Backstage. Taylor Swift tickets backstage. Introduce us. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce us. <laughs> Not even drive like, hey, I'll come on the bus. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. Throw that away. Yeah, we good. Yeah. <laughs> just, we just had to holler at her. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was a brutal phone call. What were we talking about before we called? The, the intro, intro song. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the intro I song. I mean, yeah, adding it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The comments, just another L. For everybody here, uh, tune in for the Coach Rule episode. That one will be, again... I shout him out each week. Mitch does a great job putting the chapters together. And when he doesn't, you guys keep him in check. Uh, but if you're here for the Coach Rule episode, check out uh, the chapters in YouTube, whether you're on YouTube, Rumble, wherever you're getting the pod. Probably in the description or the bios if you're on audio to see where that one is. We obviously cut up and fuck around on the intro before we get to the, to the interview. G, you was about to say something? Trav could get us a new intro song. He knows the number one pop song. That's a good point. Is what we might have to start. Just jotting down a list of what Tra- how Travis could pay us. Hey, but look, y'all fans do not listen to Taylor Swift. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but secretly. Yeah, Taylor Swift, new you get, audience. You get Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and Jason Kelsey singing. How you that think thing? that song True. gonna go? How you think the song gonna Jason go? Jason can sing a little bit. How y'all think that song gonna go? Taylor With Swift Taylor? song. Yeah. Because you know yes. we got bad blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> now I'm on the bus. <laughs> oh, I can I can see it now. Laughed through the pain. We just laughed through the pain together, boy. Shout out laughing through the pain. So my shout out, no free shout out. You watch? Uh, are you a golf guy? You don't strike me. As I'm a golf guy. I I watched a little bit of the Masters though. Yeah, I'm 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 sure I'm better than you too. I guarantee. Bro, it. you cannot play golf. Look at you. I'm black. That's what he was about to say, guys. <laughs> no. uh, look at me. Yeah, I am a fucking athlete. You can't move. I just watched you. Uh, if they everybody One saw second. everybody <laughs> saw the clip. Everybody saw the clip. All I'm saying is <laughs> your hips are a little tight now. I get. Yeah, you're right. I am. I am tight, but the swing is not a full swing, and I still will outdrive you, outplay you, out. Club you, whatever you want, bro. We can go. This is like, I've been swing. telling my you man, can't, let's can't. go play golf. You can't swing an iron. Who can? That's where I'm better at, bro. My iron game is unstoppable. So you can't putt? Putt game, great. You can't drive, then, huh? Drive game is working on that. <laughs> I'm working on that. You saw a video of Will swing? Terrible. Hey, that, was a, that was a Terrible. Ago. And we knew I would, my low back was hurt. For sure. Oh, low back problems now. It's tape's tape. Tape tape's is tape. tape. Tape's out there. I saw it. doesn't look good either. You and Taylor both. <laughs> you saw one I just gashed the ground right yeah. from and the ball just falls back on the tee. Nobody wants to play after you. You didn't rip up the whole t- <laughs> the tee box. Come on, G. I fucked that up. But you fixed, <laughs> what are they, divots? You, you can go. fix them. Yeah, you can fix them. It's a divot. You can fix a divot, but we definitely need to get on the course. Do you have a golfer that you root for in the Masters? Or you just casually watch? You're a casual. I'm just a casual watcher. You get knowing I'm a casual too. Like, oh, you just straight. You're a casual. Aren't you? <laughs> I'm a casual watcher. You know, it's, it's shout long. Out, shout out, uh, Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. Scotty Scheffler did go crazy. He won by four strokes. He won two out of the last three. His quote afterwards. What was uh, Jack? You can you can throw that quote up there. Scotty, future father. Future father. Might he been get, playing. I have to get him a hat. He been playing no. well, though. He's Haven't he? a girl yeah. dad. Been playing well. He had six wins coming into the match. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He been playing well. He great. Yeah, he talks about his, uh, his 
a special feeling to know that I'm secure forever and it doesn't matter if I win this tournament or lose this tournament, my identity, my identity is secure forever. He also said something along the lines of like, an unfulfilling career. Was it unfulfilling? Is that, was that the word he used? I think that golf is a very unfulfilling career. Like right now I'm sitting in front of you guys. Like I don't care about this green jacket. All I'm thinking about is getting home right now. Yeah, with the fam. Shit. Yeah, he's about to have his firstborn. Yeah. Yeah. Prodigal son. I feel like it plays into his mentality on the course. Like if you're not fully invested, like thinking like I have to, you know, win this tournament or I have to make this putter, I have to make the shot. He kind of like, I don't know, he doesn't take it too serious. I think that's the best way to do it. I I, I kind of almost played a game like when I played, I didn't take it too serious. That's why like after games, I never seemed like I was mad, upset. I didn't cry because it's, then when you take it too serious, you try too hard. And sometimes when you try too hard, that's when you make the mistake. Yeah, fair point. I think he also knows that there's always going to be another round. Always. Like, there's always another shot. Like like we were talking earlier, he makes a bogey on a hole. He's the best at getting that that stroke back. Right. He immediately comes and gets it back. Right. But I think that his mentality is like, like you saying, my identity secure. Like, this doesn't make or break. I'm going to play again tomorrow. Next turn. And he's 27. Having that wisdom young like that is crucial, bro. Is, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because he talked about Saturday night. He was sitting with all his friends that were there in Augusta with him. And he was telling them, like, man, like I want to win so bad. I'm like, I don't know if he said he was nervous, but he was, you know, he's a competitor. All he wants to do is win. And they reminded him the same thing we're saying. Like, hey, man, like, say worst case scenario, like, you've already won you're good. Like the result does not define you at all. And to, it just shows the importance for like all athletes, the importance of your circle around you. Mm -hmm. if you got guys saying that you're going to be out there so much more loose. Like, right. So, but it's true. He already won. He's in the masters, like all his group, friend groups around him probably grew up playing golf with him. Wanting to be on this day, on this stage. The biggest stage you can be in, and they mind they like you won already, bro. Like don't put too much. Don't pressure put on too it. much pressure. You're here, yeah, and you will always come back here, like because you've been here. So I, I understand that when you do have friends like that to make you kind of settle down, because you need that settle down sometimes. It's great to have because you know your friend group. They all want to be where you at, right? You know, and they mind you made it to the ultimate point. What more can you do? You know what I mean? Take what and you got. Like, and it's like even you care so much and then say you do get it. Like, JP, you were talking about earlier, like you just end up chasing, like you're chasing the next thing. That doesn't mean like don't go after and win everything and all that. But he was, uh, JP was referencing Tom Brady after his third Super Bowl. What would you say that uh, Tom said? He said after he won that third Super Bowl, he kind of like a few days later sat back and was like, is this really all there is to kind of like to to my life like because this is not what is not fulfilling at all like that that the feeling's already gone after winning it the first time it was gone <laughs> right but it's like he wins the three and he's like man there has to be more to life than this right it's like you keep chasing you'll never catch whatever it is that you're yeah. trying to chase he, you win three and it's like okay all you now think about is how do you get the fourth one where you're not even realizing how far you've come yeah. Well, because it's kind of like, oh, it doesn't matter. What, what's, what's your favorite ring? The next one. Yeah. I mean, Giselle was the next one. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to put it out, he said, damn, I'm, I've been winning Super Bowls. What else can I get? Let Giselle. me get the baddest chick in the world at that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck. I ain't mad at him. Oh, you got something, G? I was just going to say, the boy Max. I know that's all, yeah. He had a good weekend. Just some tough still, battles. I feel like a lot of people were pulling from him. Oh yeah, I mean pulling he's he's him. like the people's champ. Like yeah. he's just most relatable because yeah. he is out there just kind of like cutting up and you know him and his caddy will talk shit to each other. He told us on the when he yeah. came on, but just he just seems like a real dude. But he uh, he had some good quotes too. Yeah, he had that banger quote going into that final round. He's like, yeah, what what did he say? He's like, uh, I just got to remind myself that I'm a dog and I'm ready for this moment before the final round. Which was sick. Yeah. What else was happening? Oh, UFC 300. Did you happen to catch UFC 300? Bro. <laughs> Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. For the baddest motherfucker belt. Justin Gaethje the, was the title holder yeah. of the baddest motherfucker belt. Mm -hmm. BMF belt. 
And him and Max fucking throwing five rounds straight. Max is up five rounds and nothing. Like basically Gaethje needs, he needs a knockout just like to win the fight. He's got no shot unless he knocks him out. Yo. But anyway, they're battling. You see my man Gaethje, oh, yeah, his nose babe, is bleeding. Babe. He caught a heel at the very end of the first round, caught a heel to the nose, was bleeding, was kind of like gun shy a little bit. Max, they're going in, they're in the final round. And again, Max has secured the win. Yeah. Like a three hundred, six hundred thousand dollar bonus, all this stuff. Five to nothing. He's gonna win unanimous. Five nothing on round. The they hit the for the last 10 seconds. Max goes to the middle and points Point just at the ground and says, Come on, oh, come man. on. And they just start swinging. Uh, Watch this. I saw that. He's like, get to the middle. Let's go. Ying, ying, ying. They just start hillbilly ying, fighting. Ying, ying, ying. That's some raw, that's right, that's raw dog ah. right there. Raw dog them. <laughs> One second yeah. left, bro. Got him. He, hey, oh, buddy, oh, buddy, <laughs> should have never went in the middle. Because <laughs> he had nothing to lose. But he's, thinking, but he's thinking, like, maybe I catch him. I know, but, oh, buddy had nothing to lose. He was already down in the cards. He had nothing. He, he, man. No, but he was up. Oh, he was, he up. was oh, up. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought the other dude was Max up. Max was up five. No, there's oh, no yeah. reason for him to say, hey, come to the middle, let's swing. Yeah, he 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 got he he went in there and dogged him. He Bro, raw dogged. That him. shit was crazy. That's crazy. Now I didn't get to catch all of that. Man, he I saw the just the knockout. Yeah, you got it. You gotta see Pereira's. Yeah, yeah. Show him uh show him Pereira. Who was the cat that he fought, Pereira? Uh, Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill, who was coming back from an Achilles. He was like the champ before he yeah. tore his Achilles like the day before a fight or something yeah. like that. So he's coming back into the ring and Prayer and him, they're going toes and you got to see Prayer, bro. The ref tries to step in because uh, Hill like... Oh, yeah, they, they did the meme on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one, yeah. the black dude, the, the African dude. <laughs> but Hill had kind of hit him. I don't know if it was awkward, but the uh, the ref was about to step in and, and back him up and say, hey, you know, that's a warning yeah. or whatever it is. But as the ref was stepping in, Pereira, who's the one who got hit, he he, he told the back. ref, he said, no, nah, stay back. Let's get and this. And then drops him. The next punch dropped him. You could probably go to uh, JP's Twitter yeah. as well. You go to JP's Twitter, his, one of his recent tweets, he kind of posted it. But it's badass, bro. I mean, it was a hell of a card. You got Aljo, who's literally can have a title fight at any moment. Who's on the prelims? Who's not even on the main card? Crazy. These uh, two Chinese chicks, they're fucking swinging the whole time. I mean, shit. For the women's belt. It was the 300. Chandler, Chandler McGregor gets announced for 303. So McGregor and Chandler, Michael yeah, Chandler, are now fighting. set for June 29th. Yeah. Week A. That's the whole Beer Olympics week yeah, that we're that setting week. up. They in Vegas. We do Beer Olympics and we stay and then hit the fight. On Saturday. Yeah. Because that shit is going to be... Nuts. Insane. Watch this. He kicked him in his... Nah, watch out. He's like, nah, nah, watch out. That was yeah. not... Bing, bing. They ain't hit him with the meme. God, dog. Bro. How you gonna disrespect him like that? I know. This is what y'all brought me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know who he's gonna fight next. Maybe... I think the people should start campaigning for John Jones to come back down to 205 one more time. He may do he that. He, he could do or that. Pereira might go up. Pereira is insane, bro. He beat Izzy the first time at 185. Now he's fighting at 205. This man weighed in at 205, and he weighed 237 right before the fight. Damn. Pereira? Yes. How did he ever get down to 185? They Man, they got ways. Ozempic. Yeah. I was just about to say yeah. that. Was so, epic, bro. That stopped you from eating. You got the, you got like, I mean, there's peptides out there that can get in and out of your system within like eight hours. Yeah. Eight hours. Yeah. But I mean, you can't use the Zempics. Is that cheating? I have no clue. Yeah, I, I would think assume that's cheating. cheating. I would assume it, it. You think it's cheating? I don't know. Lose weight? Yeah. You're injecting in your body something that like suppresses like he a, can't, he can be diabetes. He can have diabetes. I mean, yeah, yeah. he could, right? <laughs> he could, you know what I mean? Look at that, he was a Zempic. is legal. It's so new right now, I feel like. Well, wasn't there a big article on it that, like, it's, there's stuff coming out that it's, like, bad for you? It is. Causing... It's, it kill, it, it's, it's like shutting down your kidneys. Yeah. 
all of that. Trust, man, it's really like bad lawsuit. for you. There's like some lawsuits going yeah, on. Yeah, people that's are like getting the, sick. That's like the Hollywood drug. Yeah, is, everyone uh, is every doing it. Every actor, yes. Everybody. They, and they lie. And what, then to people be like, say, expose Jack? them. It didn't say. I'm telling you, you it, it, it ain't. It's going to start getting put in soon because they it's so new. And they think athletes won't take it because it does make you drop weight so fast. I feel like it should make you weak. I would assume that it's on the uh, USADA. Think? I mean, all the things that are on there, you're thinking Ozempic isn't on that banned substance list? Especially in like the UFC where you got to make weight. Maybe UFC. I just don't think that's a thing in the NFL. It's like, who who, who want to take a drug to lose fucking weight? Right. <laughs> like right, what, yeah, what's that gonna not, help you're you you're not necessarily unless like you got something in your contract so yeah you yeah you, certain weight. there you go there you go like old uh, old pot roast yeah night and nah he, he uh, was funny when yeah, I told him that yeah. I was like paycheck different he was like what I was like no <laughs> <laughs> be his story. <laughs> I told the D lineman, like, hey, don't let T Knight and Terrence Knight tell you, get on you at all about making your weight. Yeah. This man would not step on the scale at all. Take his fines because he's like, oh, my budget's different now. <laughs> y'all are about to find me. Yeah, he said, I'm however many to... pounds over. He said, y'all want me to weigh in after you got this good ass food in the cafeteria? <laughs> I was like, dude, you this know what? Is in, crazy. My, in my head, that means that the pounds he was over, that per pound, that he would have to pay yeah. was more than the fine he just takes for not weighing in. Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, the fine well, it was only, what, it's like, I think it was like 500 a pound or something like that, or 1,000 a pound. All depends who you were. Yeah, it depends on how you negotiate that up. Yeah. Um, all right, pivoting. Live show, Alabama live show tickets. They are on sale right now. That live show is April 23rd in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Busting with the boys myself. Taylor will be there. Um, are you going to that one? I can go to that one. Okay. I can go to that one. All the boys. Um, those tickets are on sale now. The link at Bus and WTP follows on social. We'll obviously post the link. Yeah. Links in all of our bios. So check the bios. If you're in uh, Tuscaloosa or you're a couple hours out, come join the boys April 23rd in Tuscaloosa. Do you, what's the place called, G? Do you know? G-Spot. G-Spot. All right, G-Spot. It's we called the G spot. That's I mean, if you go there, that's what you call it. But it's at Galette's. Oh, okay. <laughs> G spot. Because as you guys are watching now, obviously we're releasing our Nebraska interviews at the moment. Uh, for the rest of the week, you'll get the Florida State interviews with Coach Norvell, Braden Fisk, DJ, the uh, the quarterback. How you say his last name? Look, you don't even know. That's your part. That's your boy too. Uh, Oos. Oos. Um, and Patrick Payton. Those, have, those interviews are dropping later this week. Next week will be Oregon. We're sitting down with a couple players from Oregon and the head coach, Dan Lanning. And then the following week will be uh, Alabama. So be on the lookout for all of our spring tour content that you'll get pretty much everywhere. Audio platforms, video, wherever it is. But let's talk about this 82-game preseason uh, with DraftKings. DraftKings. Uh, the 82-game preseason is in the books, and it's finally time for the real season. Don't miss out on any of the NBA playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Uh, from the play-in tournament through the finals, from every opening tip to every buzzer beater, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. And if you're new to this whole sports betting thing, it's super easy to get started. Try betting on something simple like a team to win, just go to the app, select your team, place your first bet. It's that simple. And here's something else to sweeten the deal. For all new customers, you bet $5 and get a $200 bonus bet instantly. So if you bet $5, you get $200 in bonus bets instantly. New customers download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BUS. That's B-U-S. Uh, code BUS to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just $5. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Um, yes, yeah, so you saw your boy at the uh, Barstow Mini Golf Tournament last week? I did, man. I did. Yeah, yeah. How did How that are you go? Mini golf? I am probably the best. All right. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> I'm just saying. They got a little mini in indoor mini golf uh, course out here in Nashville. Your boy was balling. Now, the course, fairly simple. You saw everybody. They were very like at simple. Least, at least minus 30 throughout the whole. Simple, league, bro. For all four rounds. But. Your boy won a pretty massive side bet. What round did you come in? Well, I mean, what place did you? I think I like tied for 12th. Something low. Yeah, yeah. That... I mean, I'm not. I play with the boys. Like, I, you know, 
You did been? I exceed your guys' expectations? I th- I've, I expected you to do right around what you did. Okay. Y'all been to year, that new one? The year before in Arizona, remember, I was like, it was bad. Terrible. Yeah. Like what? Plus six. You had a lot going on. Plus eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was trying to get a passport from the ambassador. Oh, that's forever. right. Yeah, that's right. Trying to go to Mexico. And not to mention Dave talking to me like I'm a little kid, bro. That was. Come on, Willie. Yeah. Hey, don't talk during your swing. Come on, Willie. You can do this. You can do this. <laughs> he was that terrible? Bro, I was bad. I think I was like plus eight throughout Damn. that tournament. Like I was like, I think last. And so knowing that I made the cut to go to the final two rounds was, uh, your boy was hype. But I had a side bet going on with the four play guys. Um, there was a little, a little dust up back in, uh, what, August, something like that last year. where We kind of went back and forth with Riggs, who's the head guy for the four play pod, um, because of something that I think Frankie was talking about on a podcast. I think it was, uh, not the rundown, Barstool Radio. Yeah, Barstool Radio. Of the merch, right? And I had one of my, you know, uh, 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 pantry talks. And so that was kind of, we were kind of arguing about, I mean, it was stupid. But foreplay promoing merch, uh, them promoing our bus and golf merch. There was like, a, there was a dust. They didn't like it. Yeah, we'll yeah, say yeah, that, yeah. yeah, there was a dust. Up. <laughs> and so playing with them, I, I go up. I was like, hey, boys, you know, I would hate for us to all go to the ground today and, you know, be disrespectful to the tournament. We kind of like chuckled about it. But I was like, hey, I got to bet. If all three of you, because they're all golf guys, yep. if all three of you beat me, I will, I, I will monkey dance. I'll do, I am at your mercy for any content yeah. you want to make. To, for me to promo your guys' golf merch, since that's what everything was over. And I was like, but if I beat any one of you three, then it's vice versa. It's flipped. I get to do the same with y'all. And they were, they, Riggs, yeah, tell you, he was confident. I was kind of nervous how confident he was. Yeah. I, was like, Fuck, I, I felt like it was Trent, but I didn't know. And Riggs and Frankie crushed it. They were like in the top five. Like uh, they were yeah. battling up. There was a, the final group, it was down to like the last two holes. Uh-huh. But Frankie and Riggs were in that group. And it was me and Trent in like the last place group into the like final round. Yep. And I was up six strokes on Trent. And that's all who I had to beat. But I bogeyed the very first hole. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, yeah, I was thought. legitimately nervous, like in my head, like, fuck, I can't lose this lead. I can't lose this lead. I can't lose this lead. Yeah. And sure enough, the first three holes, I bogeyed all three of them. He gets three strokes on me right out of the gate. Damn. And I'm thinking, the, uh, uh, the, yeah, I'm in my fucking head yeah, right now. They're like, over. oh, they hear his footsteps. They hear his footsteps. <laughs> and there's this dude wipes hole in the fourth hole. It's where you hit it up. When you hit it up the ramp, it goes into this toilet. The yeah, dude wipes toilet. No free shot. It's a dude wipes. And then usually you get a hole in one. It'll like drop down and be right around the hole. But it's a par three, so you can make up a couple strokes. Yep. He fucking hits it out of bounds. Shits down his leg and four four putts that hole. So he loses those three strokes yeah. again on me. He lost right there and that's kind of, I, I was able to maintain that same lead throughout the rest of the time. How did he hit it out of bounds when he went up the ramp? Did it fly he off? He tried the, going to the ramp so you got to give it some yeah, juice. Yeah, some juice and it went over. And so it went to the left of the ramp uh, and then skipped up off something yeah. and went out of bounds. So then he had to drop. He hit it close to the hole, missed the hole and then he had to hit an extra putt but Damn. fortunately I maintained the lead. But your boy... No, you, yeah, I was I was hanging on because I was like, man, this will be huge. For the, you know, we got to get this. They didn't have a lot of clips of you shooting. So we gotta, I got to watch the whole thing. I only saw. You ain't got to waste your time watching all <laughs> you know that your boy, your boy put on for the squad. And I beat you, who I needed to beat. You set up you set up a match. Set up a match with Garrett because Riggs was sitting next to me and he was like, uh, hey, your, your boy Garrett, how is he at golf? I was like, he's pretty good at golf. That's why I texted you, what's your handicap? He's like, what's his handicap? I was like, I don't fucking know. I was like, let me text him though. Because Garrett had sent out a tweet, Foreplay is doing this segment to where they take people who are like haters who have been chirping rigs forever, like on the internet, who are like yeah, golfers of them, and they try to pay for everything and fly them out or whatever. I don't want to put words like they they put them up in a five star hotel, just start saying <laughs> first class black car service. Yeah, maybe. Um, but they. They take care of him coming out to play one on one against Riggs, like uh, it's Riggs versus a hater. Yeah. And he says it's actually way harder than they thought it'd be because guys are like back out last minute or like say they're a hater. Or they, you know, then they, they don't, don't want to show face. But they had a really good one to where it ended up being a big benefit. And, you know, then obviously they make amends and the cat's like, all right, yeah, you're not that bad. And yeah. it was a good golf match. But anyway, Garrett comments to him and says, hey, I'm a low key hater. And writes a tweet to Riggs. Riggs sees it. And he's sitting next to me in the gambling cave. And he's like, hey, your boy Garrett, what's he like? 
Like he's good at golf. The cat that I was telling you when we were doing our yeah. thing back and forth, I was like, listen, I can't play you in golf and settle it like on the golf course. But one of our producers could. Definitely could. I was like, this is the cat I was talking about. And uh, he's like, all right, let's set that up. So I think it's right now, it's tentatively in early September when they're out here for the Barstool Invitational. Classic. Oh, we're gonna, yeah, the classic. We're going to get Garrett, Garrett versus Riggs. How many holes? 18. What is it, 18? It'll yeah. be an 18. They do 18. Because, <laughs> Garrett, your handicap's like, what, five, six? Yeah. Because Riggs was like, oh, that's perfect. I'm around the exact same. No, he's not. <laughs> you don't think so? I've watched the one with the haters when it came out. And the guy's whole... The hater was up on him, he said. He said he was... Won. The hater won. Did he? Yeah. The the whole, like, thing is people just shit on Riggs. Like, he's not wrong. People shit on him. They talk about I don't consume their content everything. enough, but the merch thing was enough for me to be like, I'll play you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... Like, it's not enough to where you're in the comments like everybody else. I like, think I've commented, suck. like, three times. Yeah. yeah. But this guy that they have an episode out with has commented like 80 times, like DM'd him a ton. And so Riggs was like, all right, like, let's just do this. But the guy ended up beating Riggs and they're both like, I mean, I can imagine nerves are flying. I was nervous when we, when I hit at the spit and chicklets. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's gotta be tough to get shit on and then have to try and back it up and then it not go your way. Yeah. He said the cat was pretty good, and it ended up being like a kind of an emotional deal at the end. Yeah, the guy. Uh, there was like a benefit from like well, something so I cool. I think Riggs like originally was like, "All right, yeah, I'll do this one," because the guy was like, "Uh, winner donates a thousand dollars to a charity of choice." Right. And then the guy ended up having his own charity because they had lost their child, and so it like went to something yeah. that they were doing for that, and it kind of caught Riggs off guard. And at the end, and so yeah, they're closing it out, and the guy's like. I'm going to donate this um, regardless. Like, thanks for doing this because I know people will see this. And so there was a, a good, like, benefit from it. My benefit? I don't, I mean, I don't really have one, but. It'll be a good, it'll be a nice little, yeah. nice little grudge match. Sometimes I just feel like with, with podcasts, even though they say they haters, they really not haters. They like fans. You know what I'm saying? But that segment is like a hater segment. So from that, when they announced it, he's like, it's hard to, uh, filter out who's actually a hater because yeah. when they announce it, people are just now hating just to hate because just they, the hate. they want to hit a, a golf trip. Yeah, with a of guy, course. Right? They're That's, a massive brand. There you go. And he's like, so we got to like, it's like you find people who you might have and then you got to like go back in time and see if they've been an actual hater. Yeah, player. you got to be like on some Back in the day, like, man, if I see you, I'm going to kill you. It's on site. Like, you got to say. Kill you, guys. Yeah, you got to be straight hate. <laughs> like, yeah, get this, bro. He's going to be that's, good. That's why my original thing was over the, the merch thing. Right. And so that's where the whole thing started. It'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. We had a good time. It was a good time hanging out. Where are they going to play at? I don't know. Where they where they the do classic that? Classic classic. here, and it's at Hermitage. Oh, Hermitage. Yeah. I was out with... Uh, <laughs> This is our home course. We're fucked, Riggs. <laughs> well, see, Garrett's got to show up, man. Like he said, we can't let him get in his head. We need one good hole to where we can all talk shit for Garrett. And then it's like, that, oh, That's what'll be the funnest now. part is like having both squads. All yeah, yeah, yeah. Chirping each other. Yeah, having fun. That will be fun. Yeah. We could do something like on every hole too. The one that they did with this guy, like it did get kind of tense because it's just the two of them. And like the camera guys, so there's not like everybody's kind of probably like being have quiet. his boys talking. Yeah, like, so that I feel like it'd be a good time. Both nights we had a little little cocktail crew. It was myself, Ryan, Whitney, Francis, and Frankie. And dude, hearing some of Frankie's old stories, like being in the trenches, because he was like Dave's first guy, getting paid like 40, 45 grand when it first started. And he was like, you know, hey Frankie, we're outside the pizza spot. Blah 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 blah. And hearing some of those old school stories from Frankie, just how everything came to be, it was insane. Because he's like a fiery dude. Very passionate. Like when he makes a shot, he just has like fucking, he just loses it. Yeah. He goes like all out, loves it. it and, uh, but listening to his stories, man, he's like, yo, Dave, like, he's like, I, I'd be just be sitting on my computer if Dave didn't feel like I was working. He'd be, hey, what are you looking at? Turn your computer around and show me. And he'd be like, yo, you're just like on edge. Yeah. How he shouted out Nate. Uh, he like bought him a sub before he went up for his interview because he was wearing like a nice fit to go up. But then he caught wind that it, 
he was chirping everybody that was dressed nice. So he felt dumb going up there, uh, like look, having, style, yeah. having a giddy up on. And Nate was like, hey, so what's your pitch going to be? And he kind of said something. He's like, no, Dave doesn't give a fuck about any of that stuff. He's like, you need to have X, Y, and Z. And he said it like helped him be in an interview. And then how Dave found Austin. Austin was kind of like through Frankie because Austin, he would send, he would send the pizza videos because he knew that oh, was that Dave's was, baby. Yeah. And he would Eddie. send, he would like outsource them to Austin to work for free, basically. And like, hey, if you do this right, I can get you, I can somehow get you, get you in. in. Yeah. That way, when Frankie left to go do four play pod and make other content and do things that he thought he could bring more value to, he's like, he just had this plug and play guy with Austin. Yeah. Because he's like, well, can he do? He can't edit my pizza videos. He's like, oh, he's been doing it for X amount of months. And so I like got him in, filtered him in. That's how Austin got linked up and got the gig with uh with Dave. Because Dave, that's like a 24-7. You're like all in around Dave. Yeah, I'm sure. But it was sick hearing some of those old stories. Shout out the crew, man. I think uh what is it? He named our group chat. Shout out Wit for whooping everyone's ass. Uh, Wit, bro. It was like He's going through the final round. It's like, oh, yeah, sweet putt, Wit. Like, you're fucking beating everybody by 10 strokes. <laughs> dude, Wit, Wit is so funny to be around. He's so fun to be around. He's got this, that northern accent. Yeah. Kind of always sees everything. Like, talk speaks from, like, the negative light of it. And he's just, his mannerisms are so funny. But uh, let's do our, let's hit our uh, twisted question. Let's hit our twisted question. Mitch is going to set this one up. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and play. Here we go. Twisted tea, a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and 5% alcohol. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted tea goes down smooth. There is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day, whether tailgating in the parking lot, watching at a bar, or watching with friends at home. Twisted tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted with the boys. Grab a refreshing twisted tea today. Mitch, let's hear the twisted question. Ooh. This uh, twisted question comes from the same guy as last week. This, it's on the same picture. Would you rather have every hair on your body plucked off one by one or have all of your toenails ripped off? That's a lot of hair that you got to plug off. We're, pitching a, we're, pitching a, <laughs> we're answering how would we want to be tortured. Yeah, <laughs> this dude is... Uh, what do you do for? He needs a to living? be a writer for the Saw movies. Yeah, like what do you do for a living? I don't. I don't know. I uh, probably hair. Hair plucked off. But then again, the nails go fast. Yeah, but that sh- hurt so deep. Every Woo! hair. Will I know that'll take forever. Like that's what. Every body, every hair on your body, butthole. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> We're getting ripped off from the sack, bro. Um, I mean that's the easy one. I mean I don't feel like that's gonna hurt much, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the hair. I think I'm going nails. Hair. I think you just gotta get him. I just I just don't feel like he. You, mean, you, you want me could to rip be one right now. It it probably will come right out. I'm dead serious. Told you, it didn't even feel it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, the couple came out like I don't even have no pubic hair. So how'd that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel it. <laughs> My shit is like falling out, but growing at the same time. You feel Where me? Where else can I pull one from you? Go for the leg, bro. Huh? Feel it. That ain't, that ain't shit. And you pluck that bitch out. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather do the hair. All right, maybe it's hair. Will got a lot of hair. Let's see. You know? Boy pulling like a bitch. Yeah, I didn't feel that. You feel that, see? And hey, you can't just do one at a time. Let you gotta, get, hey, let me get one of your eyebrows. Hell no. Nah. Just one. No, nah, no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. You're going to make me look like I put a fucking line in my shit. <laughs> no way. You only got like three hairs? Let you know, you, get one. You, get you're one not going to be able to get one. You're going to yank and it's going to take... Nah. You're going to take Can three. Beard? Go for it, man. I 
Ah, I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that Tom yeah. Lippert hurt a little bit. I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> I still going to take that one. That pain is quick. No, I, no, I, no, I, no, I know no, that shit don't hurt. I'm I'm thinking, the, he said his toenails. Give me some pliers. No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to say toenails. Toenails. I'm going to do hair. I, that pain ain't, it's, it's quick. It's like somebody bro, pinch you. Think about your ball sack, bro. It's going to be quick. Think about it your toenails when they, uh, they it's, oh, I can just imagine all the nerves. Ah, I had my toenails yeah, stepped on and fucking painful. Painful. You couldn't even touch it. Like, put your shoe on. Ah, I can. Your sock may get stuck to the meat. You got, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all doing? I'm doing hair. Yeah, I'm probably hair. If, you, if there's like a repercussion thing, like, or you have to like wait, toenails take like eight months to grow back. Which, yeah. But also hair, you're going to be fully bald everywhere for like at least three or four months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. You're looking like uh, Josh Dobbs. I know. I mean, that look is kind of clean, though. <laughs> Y'all probably do hair. Shit would hurt, though. Yeah. That top lip is... Right in his crevices, though. Yeah. <sighs> Felt that hair for sure for me. Yeah, easy. They do I my, think they either do my way, manscaping either way for me. Room. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. One you less thing I got to worry about. Like, come on now. You want? I feel like you want your hair to hairs to be as long as possible. On that part, yes. Everywhere, yes, yes. Because the, the shorter, oh, they're gonna have to get in. Yeah, they're gonna be yanking your skin out. Ugh. Micro good. cuts and shit. Let's hit uh, some positivity. You got any? You got? You got any dad tips? Bad tips right now, man. Uh, I I have one. Go ahead. Bro, so we celebrated. Yeah. So we. Uh, birthday. Yeah. Rue had her second birthday. It was like, it was April 3rd. But anyway, we had our, our families in town. Mm-hmm. The reason to get the families together, we had a little pizza party. But dad tip, would, my dad tip would be to have, because they're not going to remember their second no, birthday. No, at all. Have those birthday parties at spots you enjoy eating at. So Dicey's Pizza, no free shots at Dicey's. Love their pizza. Nice little outdoor environment so the kids can run around and play and all that stuff. But my dad tip would be to, to build the birthday party around a place you like to go. It's funny you say that. That is a great tip because my daughter's birthday, her eight-year-old, both her eight-year-old, eight-year birthday, um, we went to a, a actually a, um, a place that made like a, a brewery, but it was like an outdoor area for kids too, though. On, so I like all the adults, because if you thirty, quick thirty, quick thirty. No, like I'm saying, if you want to have your old birthday party at a brewery, but it was it was split. It was like a kids thing and a brewery, so all the parents will come. That's how you get the parents to come to bring all the kids. So we had more kids than we thought we would have because the parents wanted to come because it was like, oh, we get to drink cider. And watch our kids have fun in this area that's secure. It was gated off. It had a back area, but it was they sold cider. And I'm I'm like, oh, this is was a great idea. Cause all the kids came. My daughter had the best birthday she ever had because everyone brought their kids. Because if the parents, parents wanted to go. The parents want to go. If the parents don't want to go, your party gonna be light. But if the parents do want to go, you're gonna have a packed party. And so I'll take that like that's what you said. Yeah. You gotta take that. Yeah, no, that, that seems to play. Get the kids, like, flights of juice, different juices. That would be hype. <laughs> you don't talk about them breweries that you get, like, a flight. No, no, you right. Yeah, up. they they think they drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want some. You right. You right. You're right. No, they, they kind of did something like that, too. <laughs> yeah. They kind of did something. I wasn't, in, I wasn't in control of that yeah. situation, but. What uh. Shout out, no free shout out. You boys got shout outs? That's going to be my, my shout out, no free shout out. going to be my dad tip. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna let that slide. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that slide at all. Oh, I know you I have one. You guys speak up. I, I got one. Uh, <laughs> I got a, a shout out. No free shout out. And I, I'm, I know y'all gonna be like, this boy on heavy equipment right now. But a skid steer, bro. 
I got a 299D <laughs> skid steer. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. Your boy is country as hell all of a sudden. I'm out here. I'm making tra trails. I done made a shooting range with this thing. I mean, I am clearing land, bro. Never thought something, I'll be doing something like that, especially me being black from the hood. And now I live in the from country. California. From California, the concrete jungle. You feel me? We don't have grass. I'm sure, it turns you out. Yeah, I'll say that. Tennessee more Tennessee, like yeah. Tennessee more like turned me out. So no my shout out, no free shout out. 299D skid stare from Caterpillar, baby. Holla at your boy. <laughs> Would love a piece of equipment. Wait, I'll love another one. Give me a shout out. <laughs> It'll be our, our boy mom hats. Our boy mom hats drop. Ooh, just drop. They're dropping. When, when do they drop officially? Wednesday. So if you're listening right now, these boy mom hats drop tomorrow. Um, I think this is awesome. Yeah, I'm going to get me world, one of those for sure. For the boys podcast, all the boys out there, I'm sure you have a, a stud mother that's been behind the scenes for your entire life. Yep. Get them, hook them up with one of those for Mother's Day. Uh, or if your wife, you guys are expecting a boy. What a great gift to get your wife. If you have a son, I know people are like, oh, when are dad boy stuff dropping? Look, we're not trying to cuck the, the son of a boy dad fellas out there. But we got some boy mom hats that are dropping that I think is going to be, those are going to be sick. And number one, there, well, Barstool doubts that those push a lot because we can only do two colors. So once we prove this model, I think there's only, only going to be like 100, 150 in stock. So once we move those. Then we'll, we'll get more colorways. Right now, we got the natural look. I uh, uh, pulled around a couple a couple of the ladies in my life. They said natural, and they said navy. So we got natural color, and we got navy coming out first. So once we sell those out, I'm sure we can do more stuff. Up. But uh, a sick a sick uh, Mother's Day gift, a gift for a, a boy mom out there, we got them in natural, natural, and navy. Yeah, I'll be getting mines on Wednesday, mate. Go ahead and put that on. I don't want to mess up my hair right now. I got to go do it. <laughs> it ain't moving, but it will flatten oh. that shit down. You look funny in a little, those like uh, flimsy dad hats. Who, me? Yeah. I know. I, they don't fit me really well. I need like a straight band, like hard brim, snap back, them flimsy ones. My head is just. Yeah, you're way too. Yeah. You're like a muscle head. Sure. I mean, he is. <laughs> Are you not? No. Wide face. That's a football stack. That's just for Strong playing football. Jaw. That's for playing football. If I didn't play football, I'd probably be skinny for sure. You're not skinny now. What do you mean? I've been, you, don't, you don't play. I've been playing. You don't play. Anymore. All this time, my body is. You it's see like Taylor. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Taylor on Olympics for sure. <laughs> And now if I took that, I'll be skinny as hell. Now nah, I'm just messing with you, Taylor. <laughs> but for real. But for real. <laughs> All right, let's get into the uh, we'll get into the coach rule episode. Hang on, I think it would be wrong of us not to shout out a big fight that's happening June 29th. Oh fuck yeah 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 UFC yeah. You, we had our UFC 300 talk. Another big thing that happened is in the uh, presser afterwards, uh, Dana announcing June 29th it is official. Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. The boy, it's time to burn the fucking boats, dude. We're finally getting that fight. We, <laughs> Mike's finally getting that fight. We will hopefully all be there. Um, that shit is going to be electric. Yes. And if you're looking for tickets for it, use the Game Time app. Use the Game Time app. You're looking for tickets for this UFC 303, uh, the Game Time app. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. The official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have flash deals for sudden discounts, zone deals for when you're feeling flexible, and their lowest price guarantee, which means if you can find the same seats for less anywhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game time is the best place for last minute seats with up to 60% off your favorite events. Uh, what are you waiting for? Your boy, we're going to be, listen, if we don't get these uh, tickets pushed over to us, we will be going to UFC 303 using the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BUSSIN, B U S S I N, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. 
Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. But definitely shout out to boy Michael Chandler landing this uh, UFC 303. I know he's been waiting a minute. It's been kind of getting worked on behind the scenes, so he hasn't been able to talk about it a whole lot. And then it's like getting fleshed out to where it's like, is this fight even going to happen? You see Connor out there pushing Roadhouse. And yeah. kind of looking a little banged up on some of these interviews. Is that, have you been seeing it? I mean, yeah, he just... He just, he, you know, it looked like he fucked up. Yeah, like, <laughs> on something. Yeah. But uh, I can't wait for the build up. See them going back and forth. See Conor McGregor kind of get, you know, start talking some shit. I mean, like, that's around the corner. Is he going to be, pre- like, ready for that? Hopefully not. <laughs> so he, he might just end this one the first round. Because he's been doing his movie thing, yeah. you know what I mean? So, But uh, we'll get into the, the Coach Rule episode. The Coach Rule episode, we sit down with Coach Rule. We talk to him about, you know, not making a bowl game, getting so close, like starting off the season one where we five and three, and then we just drop the next four to not make a bowl game, which is unfortunate. The origin story of if we die, we die. We sat with a couple players. We sat with Coach Rule. There's some rumors going around, whether it was before the Michigan game, whether it was before the Northern Illinois game. We talked to him about the if we die, we die speech, uh, landing a top recruiting class. Um, and being aligned with the new AD. Obviously, when Coach Rule got brought on, you had Coach, uh, the president, President Carter. You had the athletic director, Trev Alberts, who were pivotal in getting Coach Rule to Lincoln. And as everybody knows with, like, the way that world works, if, a, you know, an AD moves on, gets fired, president, whatever the case is, they're usually the next guy that comes in wants to bring in their own guys. So how uh, implemental Coach Rule was in this process with hiring the new AD, we talked to him about that. But it's an awesome episode. We had an incredible time out in Lincoln, Nebraska. The hospitality is out there is insane. They treat us very well. You're going to listen to the Coach Rule episode, and then the Dylan Rail episode will be dropping later this morning As you're, if you're consuming this early, um, right out of bed. I think this is dropping like 6 a.m. Rail one will be around lunchtime at some point. Uh, but again, awesome interviews. Awesome sit down with Coach Rule. He's one of the best. He has... I didn't know if he had pink eye, so I didn't really allude to it. Then he hit me at the live show. He's like, hey, I saw you staring at my eye. And I was like, I didn't know if I wanted to hit you with a joke. Did your wife fall on your pillow? I didn't know where I could go with that. You said that while she was there. Too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Don, you know, if you're in the comments, try not to say, does Coach Rule ask if Coach Rule has pink eye in the comments. You're going to love this episode. Uh, again, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you're subscribed on audio, all video platforms. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Shout out you guys for the support. Uh, enjoy this episode with Coach Rule. You know what? Game on. I mean, hey, I don't have to lose. Hey. <laughs> don't have to lose. <laughs> with that, welcome to another episode of Busting with the Boys. First question, Coach. What game? What game was the "If We Die, We Die" speech? Oof, that was uh, that was Illinois, I believe. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm waiting Michigan, to ask yeah. you that. No, no, it wasn't Michigan. That was Michigan. No. Does your player seem to think it was Michigan? You have to show it to me. What y'all saying? What, what y'all saying, what y'all saying out there? The dies. The, uh, the die. It was NIU. No, it was NIU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. Northern Illinois. Yeah. Oh, we're bringing oh, okay. the banger. If we die, we die. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That makes you feel better. If we would have lost the game, I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Strategic, the, strategic. Yeah, play. Michigan, Michigan, um, Michigan probably was more like the halftime speech, and then the next day, you know, the next day we went out. The next day we went out and said, "All right, y'all don't want to play on Saturdays. We're gonna play on Sundays." Now that's before we knew they had our signal. I'm not saying that's why we lost, but like before we knew all the kind of controversy around the games. Man, we we went out there Sunday night. We had a Friday game, Sunday night. There, my boy Jay Lit over there. He's got, he's got like canned footage of like. I mean, it was. I'm talking about how long? How long we go for? An hour and a half, like full play. Like guys out there, defense talking trash to the offense. Like, like literally 24 hours after we just played Michigan, and and I said, all right, if you don't want to play on Saturdays, if you know we get down, we're gonna just kind of roll over. Then we'll play on Sundays. And we played, and then we went Friday night to Illinois, and we beat Illinois. Yeah. So. So, was, but did the players know that they were going to practice on a Sunday? No, the coaches didn't know. No one knew. No one knew. No, I I, I literally spent the whole day kind of going back. Because, you know, you don't want to overreact, right? But we had had the Colorado game. The Colorado game was our second game of the year. Tough loss first game against Minnesota. Second game of the year, 13-7 with like seven minutes left, and we lose 36-13. Kind of got away from us. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm trying to teach them. Come back. We beat Northern Illinois. Beat La Tech. 
play Michigan, get down 28 nothing, and it's like, ah, oh, darn it. And just I'm, I'm not here to have guys you – know, I love these guys too much to let them say, oh, oh, darn it. So I went back and forth all day, and then finally I was like, you know, what would you have done back at Temple before all the – before all the stuff, right? Before, you know, everyone's watching what you're doing. Back at Temple, we had the Hassan Reddicks and the Deion Dawkins and all those, like, real dudes. I was like, what would we have done back then? We would have gone out and practiced. And so we went out there, and what I saw was these guys come to life. And that's why, you know, we went out, we beat Illinois, we beat Northwestern, we beat Purdue. We went a little three-game, three- or four-game win streak, three-game win streak. So um, – we got some winners here. I just, but literally, it was just like me and my heart back and forth. What should I do? Because as a coach, you have to get up there and present like you know what you're doing. But sometimes you're like, man, I don't know what to do right now because you you don't want someone to get hurt. You don't want to do the wrong thing, but you also want them to know that you expect more from them other than just if we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose. But we're not gonna we're not gonna lay down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How was that throughout the year? Obviously, you're not feeling the expectation of Nebraska and the fan base and everything else and falling short of, like, being bowl eligible, especially when you had a couple games there at the end to to do just that. Yeah, I mean, we were 5-3, and three, you know. It's 5-3 and three to finish 5-7. and seven. And uh, it's like anything else, man. It's a double-edged sword, right? Um, my heart really hurt for the, for the older guys, right? Like, they had been through so much, and some of them came back just to help us get to – uh, to be bowl eligible, to be the team that brought us back. I mean, I, I'd walk downtown and students would say, Coach, I came back for another year because I want to go to a bowl game. Like, So I felt that, not for me, not expectation even, just how much the players have put into it. And to lose 20-17, to 17, and then to lose 13-10, and then to lose in overtime, and then to lose 13-10 on the last play, two walk-off field goals, uh, my heart hurt for those guys. I really, really, really appreciated those guys. With that being said... Um, sometimes you can go six and six, you can go to a bowl game and go play in a nice bowl game, beat a team you should beat, finish seven and six. Everybody's walking around smiling. Like we have like an intensity about us. We have an urgency about us, um, that we might not have had, had we, had we gone and gotten a little bowl, the PlayStation from the bowl game and a nice little <laughs> yeah, jogging yeah. suit. So I think we, I think there's some positives, but, um, we didn't get it done. That shows, though, you can tell because y'all going five and seven and still being one of the top, um, having one of the top recruiting classes. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I think you as you see this place, like, you know, and again, facilities don't – what do facilities do? They tell you that football is important here. Our fan base tells people that football is important here. And so we work our tails off. We work hard in recruiting and – um just to get people here. Cause I think once you get here and like you walk around Lincoln, you go downtown, you see the campus, you're like, Oh snap. Like this is a really, really cool place. And so, um, you know, <laughs> the highlights came on. They just, they just turned on the highlights. Yeah, That's I mean, all we got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see me, bro. You see me covering. But you know what? I, but honestly, like, I think the big thing is all along players could see like, Hey, my history at temple, you know, being two and 10, then being six and six. And then, Back to back, you know, top twenty-five teams, you know, back to back conference champions, you know, t- top twenty-five at different times of the year. Uh, going to Baylor, being one and eleven, then being seven and six, then playing in the Sugar Bowl. I think people realize, hey, this is like a coach will try to build it the right way. So to be five and seven, maybe outperform. So I think a lot of the young players are like, all right, I see it, I see what they're trying to do, I see how they're doing it, and um, I think we're gonna just gonna continue. We're gonna continue to recruit well. What do you so. feel like you've learned the first year coaching, being the head coach of the University of Nebraska? That, you know, when I took this job, I was very uncertain. You know, I was very like, nah, you know, you just get fired. You're a little scarred, you know, and I don't really know. I'm a Northeast guy. And I was very uncertain, like, you know, not in a bad way, just like in a, and my wife was like, that's the job. That's the job. Go to Nebraska. That's the job. Go to Nebraska. So like two weeks in, you know, because I was living downtown, my family, my, my kids were finishing school. I called her. I was like, as usual, you were right. Like, this is a great place. Like, I didn't know how good the people were. I didn't know, I mean, this is a place, and you know this, but this is a place where, like, 60 minutes before the game, everybody's in the stands watching warm-ups. Like, they, oh, they, they, they love the players so much that they want to watch even the guys who aren't going to play. They want to watch them warm up. This is a place that, like, uh, after the game, win or lose, is going to stand up and cheer for you and probably cheer for the opponent. So it, <laughs> it's football done right. And, um, you know, I love the game of football, and this is a place that loves football. So it's like the perfect match for me. Uh, perfect match for my family, and I, I think that uh, I think that we can be what, what we're expecting to be. Gentlemen.
I interrupt this episode to bring you a brand near and dear to my heart, and that brand is True Classic. I cannot stress how much I love the way these tees. Listen, I've been rocking True Classic for almost a year now. Fortunately, the boys have now came on board to collab with the fellas on promoting their brand because their shit is so comfortable. Look, Deion Sanders says it best. You look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. You play good, they pay good. I've been the guy looking for tees where they snug your arms just right. I am the guy that has a little bit of flub. Did you get that, Mitch? You got the flub? A little bit of flub that sits on my waistline and you want to find the right classic looking tee that's number one, comfortable, but fits you right, that snugs, that cuddles up to your arms, that hugs your shoulders, that gives a little bit on your chest to give you a little flowy sensation to make it seem like you look way more athletic than you actually are. I am that guy. And I'm telling you, true classic, whether you're into polos, V-necks, crew necks, these t-shirts, denim, jeans, joggers, superior comfort comfortability, superior durability, and superior flexibility. I can put, I can load my spine with probably not that heavy, probably 185 or 225 because my back's a little, my back's a little run down these days, but I could put I could barbell back squat with a set of their jeans on because they are that flexible, their performance is that superior, and they are that durable. I can this has True Classic has the Willie guarantee on it. True Classic also has a guarantee that if it does not fit perfectly, you can send it back for free. They have a spring collection. I don't want to butcher the colors. I don't want to butcher the colors, but they got a spring collection with 10 fresh colors that are vibrant. In the crew neck, V neck, and polo styles, from the serene tones of Heather Sapphire to bold allure of Dark Orchid, no matter what your mood is, they have a hue for you. Shop True Classic, shop with the boys, True Classic. The men's tea. <laughs> back to the episode. So, you think that's what made your decision easier to leave the NFL and then come back to Nebraska? Well, they made the decision for me when they told me to get my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, your key card, your, 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 also. your key card will not be working anymore. <laughs> no, but but in all seriousness, um, I you know, I I had a I, I had a chance to go be an assistant coach in the in the NFL at the New York Giants and had an amazing experience. You know, um, worked with the O line, the guys like you know Chris Snead, Dave Deal, David Boss, like all these great dudes. And I was a young assistant coach. Being a head coach in the NFL probably wasn't wasn't really for me. Like I love players. And you're caught there sometimes in like, you're the guy you're cutting guys. You're the guy. And some guys probably can do it way better than me. Some guys, you know, maybe like a Vrabel or someone who's played. I struggled with coaching you, coaching you, and then cutting you. Uh, I, stu- you know, I struggled with my family not being a part of it. Like last night, if you'd have been here, the whole team, we have dinner in the Hawks indoor players. Tell them to invite their families, invite their girlfriends. Coaches invite everybody. My, you know, my daughters are walking around. My wife knows not just our players, their girlfriends, their families. Like, It's college and it's just a little bit more how I'm wired. It's a little bit more relationship built. So, you know, when, when, when Carolina didn't work out, it was like, you know what? Hey, I, I, I took a shot at this. It was a great experience, but, um, I really love college football and this is a place that I believe does college football, right? You know, we're not, we're not using players. We're not, we're not bringing them in. If they're not good enough, throwing them out, you know, this is a place that really wants to develop guys. And so that kind of matches who I am. So did you did you always feel like you was going to be a coach? I know playing linebacker at Penn State and then being a GA at Penn State right after. Did you feel like this was your calling to be a coach, be around young men, develop him, developing them and giving them the opportunity to be players in the NFL? Yeah, yeah, from the time I was from the time I was like, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8 years old, I wanted to be a college football coach. It's my wife sometimes She'll say to me, like, man, you're so lucky. Like, you you know what you want to do your whole life. You know, my dad, my dad's a minister and he's also, but he's also a high school teacher and coach. My uncle's on the Pennsylvania High School Coaches Hall of Fame. Like, my whole life, I always wanted to coach and coach college football. You know, I never wanted to coach high school, never really wanted to coach the pros. I wanted to be a college football coach. And I, you know, being at Penn State, being around Joe Paterno, I wanted to do that. And so um, being here now, you know, through the, through the journey of Temple to Baylor to Carolina to here, you know, being at a place that when I walk in every day, I watch walk by five national championship trophies. That's, that's something when I was eight years old, I couldn't have even comprehended. Talk about the spring league that you've introduced this year. 
it's been a talk of a couple of my group chats. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Positive, negative? Positive. Okay, yeah. A couple like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. But dudes talking like, you know, it's something that ch- it's something that changes it up uh, during the springtime. Yeah, you know how spring can be. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, I tell you what it is. I, you know, I just, uh, I was sitting there one day and I kept thinking about, you know, the history of Nebraska. Tom Miles born, you know, multiple drills going on, multiple fields going on. So we've always tried to do that, you know. In basketball, like, you know, you can go play summer league, right? You can go play AAU when you're not in season. Baseball, you can go play wooden bat league. In football, you basically just lift, you know? So how do you get better at football other than playing football? And so, you know, we have three quarterbacks. We have Heinrich, who won the starting job halfway through the year. Um, unbelievable young man, going to get better and better and better. We have Danny Kalen, elite 11 quarterback, 45 minutes down the road. Dylan Rayola, just, you know, uh, one of the top recruits in the country. So we have three guys that want to be the quarterback. And... I started thinking about like reps and was like, man, we have enough old linemen. We have enough of this. We have enough of that. What if we just divided the team up into thirds and we just played football? Cause you know, when, when I was growing up, when you guys were growing up, like, yeah, we had video games, you know, but like you guys probably had phones. I didn't, but like we still went out and played a lot. A lot of my guys, like they, they don't, they didn't really grow up playing. Maybe, you know, they might have played a little basketball. They played a lot of football. And so let's play. Let's put the ball down. Let's let's have officials. Let's let let's just play the game and not just do drills. And so that with a creative staff turned into the bug eaters, turned into the rattlesnake boys, turned into the old gold knights, taking the old team names. And like it's crazy. Like you're trying to tell your guys to be leaders and guys are like, nah, I try to keep to myself. And then all of a sudden I name someone a GM. Hey, you're the GM of this team, and that team doesn't perform. He's like, "Hey, you're getting cut tomorrow, bro." Like, <laughs> hey, if you don't know your stuff, like all of a sudden you see that this level of competitiveness come out in our guys. So, um, it's been unbelievably fun. And we heard like you involved the injured guys as being the GMs to keep everybody interacted with with the team, and, yep. and I think that's great. Like yeah. to do something like that because let alone sometimes when you injure, it almost feel like the coaches never talk to you. You're not involved. Right, so right. I think that goes a long way too. So I was watching a couple of, a couple of my highlights back there. I saw you <laughs> daydreaming. You see oh, come on, make that tackle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I okay. I don't want to. I don't want to jump around asking you about this, but a big reason of why you came here was Trev Alberts. Mm-hmm. What was it like uh, the day you got the phone call that he was going to be moving on to A and M? Yeah, you know, Trev had been really cool with me and kind of talking to me about it beforehand. Like, hey, this is out there. This could happen. Um, you know. For me, for me, so so when it, when it was, I was in Scotland. I was playing. Um, I was playing. I took my son on like a little golf trip. My son's a golfer, and you know he's graduating high school. He stayed behind in Charlotte so that I could take this job. He was like, "Hey, I'll." So I, I took me and him father son trip, and I was coming down thirteen, and my phone rang, and, I, and it was Trev, and I picked it up, and I was like, "Oh, dang! All right, well, hey, I'll call you later. I appreciate it." Then I went on ahead. Go ahead, go ahead and knock that that little par in. <laughs> A little something, a little something. But uh, but in my world, you know, of coaching, like people come and go, right? Like people move on. Doesn't we love them? Like I've had different coordinators, I've had different coaches. Like players come, they graduate. Players come, they're free agents. They move on. And I think the biggest thing is always just to make the most of your time when you're with somebody. So, you know, when I got hired, there was a president and there was an a, a, a right. AD that right. hired me. That are both gone. But um, I since I've been here, like this is home. Like I love it here. Like my, my wife opened up a business down in Lincoln. Um, my kids are in school. They're doing well. My son's coming to be a freshman here. Like this is where we want to live. So, um, you know, thankfully we hired Troy Dannon who I've known since way back at temple. I um, mean, he's a rock star, but, uh, uh, yeah, it was kind of it was a little bit of a shock to be honest right, with you. Right, but right. How, do, how do decisions like that, like affect your, affect you? Well, I think the biggest thing is like, you know, you want to have an AD, two things. You want to have an AD who wants you to be the coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want somebody who's like, yeah, he's the coach, but but if things get dicey, I'm moving on and hiring my own guy, right? Like, you want to feel like, hey, this is my guy. Because the one thing I've learned in this job, you can't do this job well if you don't have, like, a great, great partner. And you have to have an AD or a GM or, you know, whatever, who's a great partner with you. And so Trev was a great partner. You know, when I was at Temple, you know, we won a ton of games. Pat Kraft, who's now the AD at Penn State, was like, it's like my right hand guy. Like we battled through everything together. As a Baylor, Mac Rose was like my right hand guy. So Trev, I picked coming here partially because he was gonna be my right hand guy. When we lost him, obviously it's frustrating, but I've known Troy. And so when Troy came in the mix, I was like, all right, that's someone that that I really believe in. You know, when you win at Tulane, like you know how to get things done to win. And um we shoot, we were sitting up in Havelock at one of the bars in Havelock last year watching Tulane play. 
uh, USC and watching Tulane beat USC in whatever bowl game it was. Like, that's mind blowing. So to have that AD here with us with these resources, I was like, all right, we'll be all right. Yeah. How much were you involved with that decision with getting him here with Troy? They asked me for some feedback. They asked me for some names. I gave him three names, and he was one of those names, you know. And uh, obviously, I mean, I didn't pick it. You know, uh, Chris Kaborik was interim president, did all the work on it. But I appreciated them saying like, hey, who would you know? Who would you want? And I said, hey, there's probably a lot of guys. Here's a couple guys I know. Um, you know, he had just gotten to Washington. Obviously, getting to Washington, going to the national championship game, and then yeah. leaving to come here—that that's hard, and it'll be hard for him. I think it says a lot about Nebraska, though, that someone would be at a place like Washington and want to come here. So um, they they were really good to me through that process. You know, asking me, I'm sure they asked Fred, some others. You know, hey, what do you think? Um, but I knew that I knew that Troy was the type of guy that would come here and. I'm the whole thing is always like just put this place on steroids. Like we got the best of the best. Yeah. But like what we do need to do is like we we need to like have an urgency. Like we can't just we can't be five and seven. We 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 can't be just an average team in the country. This is the University of Nebraska. Like we're supposed to be here mm-hmm. and we're here right now. And so it's not my fault we're here. It's not anybody's fault we're here. We're just here. Right. But we gotta get to, if it's if we're here in three or four years, then then it is my fault. So having Troy involved uh makes me feel really good about that. With uh with Troy getting involved too, and the stuff that you got to build with Trev, um, what do you what areas do you feel like? Because you got these beautiful facilities, what areas would you say could have been lacking to where it's now you guys are growing and getting a lot better in 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 those set areas? Yeah, I, I think um what Trev allowed me to do was was go out and hire a big time strength staff with the right amount of people, um, hire a big time nutrition staff. With you know, with the right amount of people, um, and that, that, that's nothing about anybody that was here before. They were they were great coaches. Right. I'm saying hiring my people, and you know, when I first started, like you know, we had one strength coach and one assistant at Temple, and then it was like one strength coach and four assistants. And now we live in a world where like you, you better have sports science people, and you better have interns, and you better have you know, you better have a PT and a director of rehab and a director of return to play. And I mean, this is a whole different world now. And so, um, how do you keep players from going into the portal and leaving? They know that they're getting developed. They know they're getting better. I, I know everyone's going to say NIL. I'm, yeah, that's part of it, obviously. But if you're at a place where you're like, man, I'm getting bigger, I'm getting stronger, um, my mind's getting better, I'm learning the game of football. If you know you're getting developed, then you're probably going to stick around. And so putting money and infrastructure into that, we have the best, I'm telling you, we have the best nutritionist in the country. She's here, her and her team, they're here. They have two full-time chefs just for football who are also dietitians. Like, they know every person's food allergy, every person's want. We have five guys doing Ramadan. Like, they're here at they're here at 4.30, 4.45 making food for those guys so they can eat before first prayer. They're giving them food at night. Like, they are, the, they are the best nutrition staff in the country. That's not cheap. That's not easy. We had to go hire them from the SEC and bring them here. So, Trev allowed us to do all that stuff. The key to me is putting the right people in this building. And if you have the right people in this building, that, that will attract and retain really good players. Yeah. So go ahead. No, I, I was just kind of like, hell yeah. Yeah, no, that was that's <laughs> real. Like you, you, you got to surround your, you got to surround your athletes with the right people. That's the only way you can make the program better. And I feel that. I wish I played for Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> and they get you juiced up, right? Yeah, they it get always, you juiced it always seems up. Like man, to say. Real talk. So like, um, did you bring? Uh, oh, so you talked about the nil deal being from going to temple temple not having that and now having that how does that change your coaching your recruit like how is it because you old school now to this new school where it's crazy yeah. and it's not really policed so right, right. It, it, it it's it's i think it's one of the good things for me that i was in the nfl and i dealt with the whole free agent process right like my whole thing in that time was like hey when it gets to the end of the season like you handle your money like you handle you, you handle you. Once you agree to your contract or you're with us, then you're with us. And like, that was always my, my thing. So when a player was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this for my contract. I understood it. Cause I was like, you know, I've, I've had probably seven or eight different contracts. I've been head coach four different times with, you know, renegotiations. I probably had seven or eight contracts. Like when it comes time for that, it's time for that. So coming into the world of NIL, um, when a player is seeking to get what's theirs, I have no fundamental issue with that. If it starts to bleed over into, well, if I don't get this, I'm not doing that. that that's not how you, that's not how you do things in the NFL other than, you know, if you're holding out, which is different, but I'm saying like, you know, you, you have to have your business side and you have to have your 
uh, other side. And so we're preparing our guys for life and we're preparing them for the National Football League. And so everything they do from how they recover to taking notes in meetings to their mindset to now how you handle the business part of it is something that I want to be the best at. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely different. What I did see when I was in the NFL, when we drafted some young players, I saw some guys with a lot of talent who at a couple of schools, I was like, man, they really didn't coach you very hard, did they? Because they were so afraid that maybe that person was going to end up in the portal. And you know what? Like, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to be great, you got to get coached hard. If you want to be great, you need to be coached hard. And what I mean by that is when it's right, it's right. When it's wrong, it's wrong. When you do it right, man, we're going to celebrate. When you do it wrong, we're not going to celebrate. When you do it wrong again, we're going to really, we're going to talk about it. And when I'm wrong, and I think that's one of the things I do best as a head coach, when I'm wrong, then I'm going to talk about it too. I'm going to stand up in front of the team like, oh, I messed this up, guys. And so being in a program that, that doesn't push guys like that, they become fifth-round draft picks instead of first-round draft picks. And we're trying to produce first-round draft picks. And, um, you know, when I talk to Deion Dawkins, when I talk to some of those guys that I coached in college, um, they're still telling funny stories that I don't even remember. Like, you remember the time you did this? Remember the time you did that? Um, I probably did do that. <laughs> like, you're doing a Coach Pelini while I'm watching you, you know? But, but, uh, but they need to be pushed. They need to be developed. And so think about everything I've talked about. You give them the best facilities. You put the best people around them that are helping them and protecting them. But then you have a high standard for them. They got to want those things. And then at the same time, when you have an opportunity, you know, if NIL can help take care of them, then we take care of them. And, um, you know, that's why I believe, that's why I believe that we're always going to be successful. And what we've seen in two years is not many guys want to leave. You know, they, they want to be here. There's a difference between someone who's like, hey, coach, I'm not playing. I'd love to go play at this. We've helped more guys do that. We love those guys. But no one's saying, hey, I want to go leave because, you know, I'm upset about this or that. Do you feel like, uh, do you feel like, Nebraska and everybody around the state understands the importance of NIL. So I know last year there were a couple clips going around, not of you pushing that, not of you pushing saying people don't, but people having the expectation of quarterback play, hey, a starting quarterback, it costs this, it costs that, or you need the you need the level of support out there to match the level of expect of expectation. Do you feel like that's happening here? Yeah, I got I had some coaches, I had some coaches, yeah, I had some coaches across the country hit me up like, hey man, how you gonna put that out there? But I was like, it's the reality, right? Like that's that's the that's the problem in my mind, that's the problem with NIL is it's not transparent. Like in in the NFL. As you guys know, if an agent would have called us and been like, hey, you know what, uh, for Will Compton, I know I've got I've already got three years, you know, eight million a year. You know, could you guys do eight point five? And then we're like, no, nah, we can't pull the trigger on that. And all of a sudden we see he signs three years for four million a year. And we know that agent lied to us. Then we're never doing business with him again. Mm -hmm. You know, so so the NFL is so transparent because you see the contracts afterwards in, in, in the NIL world. It's all kind of hidden. Mm. So um, yeah. I I forget what you just asked me, bro. The uh, the, the support, the, yeah, yeah. He said the, the CD, Nebraska. Yeah, the the support oh, yeah. of the level of yeah, uh, support sorry. matching the expectations. So, so so my point has always been like, hey, let's let's keep it all out there. Let's make it. Let's put it all out there and say, you know, like there's teams that we we that we're gonna face that spend twenty million dollars on their football team, twenty to twenty five million dollars on their football team. So, um, you know, a lot of people will tell me like, I don't believe in NIL, and I'm like, well. It's, it's not something to believe in or not. It's real. It's here. Like, it's it's what it is. So I'm always like, hey, if you, if you want us to finish first, then then let's put first, like, first first and everything. First coaching staff, first salary pool, first facilities, first NIL. It, there, there's a reason why in the NFL they have parity, they have a salary cap. And there is really no salary cap in college right now. So um, I think we're heading in the right direction. I think it's hard for some people to sometimes understand, like, you know, what are we doing here? To me, investing in young people is never wrong. Like everyone has this thing of like, oh, kids are going to wait. You know what? I'm only where I'm at in my life because people have invested in me and given me opportunities. So if we can help young people on our team have opportunities for name, image, and likeness, then I'm 100% for it. And if we want to win, we better do it at a really high level. Mm. Do you got anything else? No, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm solid. I, I wanted to talk about this. I know in Temple you was, what, the first coach to have two consecutive – 10 game wins since 1979 mm. and you you talked about some of them players like uh and you trying to bring that man that mentality here to nebraska correct like that's that's what you're looking for yeah you know the way we played football at temple i mean you know, I, I love temple I, I love temple university temple temples in temples in north philadelphia like a, that's a real neighborhood with great people you go to Temple, you're a tough person. You grew up in a tough place. You put your feet on concrete every day. 
you know, um, so we had to play football that way. So like we, we were going to hit you, we were going to strike you. Uh, we kept track of like the amount of times a team we played lost the next week. Like we always kept track of that score. We're trying to beat you on Saturday and then have you lose again next Saturday. And so we played football that way. And what that allowed us to do because we practiced that way and lifted that way you know what? We had a lot of guys come in with one star recruits, no star recruits who who went on to play pro football, played in Canada, played in the NFL because they got they got trained. And when you have a team like Temple and you beat Vanderbilt at Vanderbilt, you know, coming off a seven win season, when you beat Penn State for the first time in 74 years, it's only because your players have put put the work in. And we went to Baylor. Baylor was a little different. We were a little more spread. But we still played good defense. When we came here, we were like, where can we go that we can? But people love defense. People will love special teams. People will love practice. People won't think that working hard is, you know, is a is a punishment. You know, like, mm -hmm. like there's people that pay money to go to CrossFit. They call it CrossFit, right? They yeah. do all, like, like this isn't punishment. This is this, we're investing in you. Where can we go? And 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 Nebraska seemed like that. You know, they believe in the running game. They believe in being physical. They believe in defense. So, I believe that this is like the way we were at Temple, but but just with way more resources way. and way, way, way more opportunities. And so that's what made this job. So that's why my wife kept saying, like, you need to go there. Like, like where, where else are you going to go that, that's going to play football the way you really want to play it deep down inside? Because deep down inside, I want to play football that way. I want, I want the game to be nine on seven, you know. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I, I love having great quarterbacks. You know, you've met a couple of them. I want to throw the ball around and be fun. But at the end of the day, I, I want to win the physical battle. And that's why I loved my time at Temple. And that's what I believe Nebraska will let us do. We interrupt this episode to bring you Sam's Selects. Emmy award-winning actor Sam Richardson is back in pure Michigan in his hometown of Detroit just in time for the 2024 draft. All of Detroit is on the clock and Sam is so excited, is so excited that he is doing a draft of his own. Detroit is a great sports town with four major pro sports teams and tons of upcoming sporting events and unique teams. Join Sam as he takes you to some of his top picks in the city, showcasing the unmistakable Detroit swagger you won't find anywhere else. Sam highlights the city's sports culture, old school favorites, and some exciting new businesses that prove everything is possible in Detroit. NFL legend and style icon Barry Sanders even drops by to help Sam get suited for the draft. Check out Sam Selects and see why Michigan is such a great place to live, work, and play at Michigan DOT at michigan.org <laughs> forward slash 2024 draft. Check out Sam Selects again at michigan.org forward slash 2024 draft. Back to the episode. I right, one more question. You, you being from New York, mm -hmm. how is Nebraska, uh, Nebraska being from New York? Yeah. Like the difference, yeah. like yeah, the no change. Doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You know, um, before I took this job, I, I wanted to come out and see it. And I think it's the number one thing that happens um, in recruiting. Like you first hear, like we'll recruit a kid from Miami, we'll recruit a kid from anywhere. And they, you hear Nebraska and you think, honestly, you think, you think like cornfield, cornfield and a campus, right? And I remember when I was in the I was in the Big 12, you know, you go to Oklahoma State and it was like a little downtown and then a big stadium. So I thought it was going to be that. And my wife and I were like, Man, I don't know about that. We came here and we went down, we drove around the Haymarket. We drove down O Street. And I was like, this is like a city. I mean, it's not a big city. But this is like a big town or a small city. I was like, if, if I can't recruit here, you know, where can I recruit? You know, we started driving around looking at, you know, the the, the town overall. I mean, it's, um, man, it's like uh, eight or nine public high schools right here in Lincoln. And then, you know, you drive 40 minutes, 45 minutes to Omaha. And Omaha is one of the coolest cities that people don't know about, one of the coolest cities in the Midwest. Like, you you, you come back here. I don't know if you ever went to the College World Series. Yeah. I went to the College World Series. I thought I was in, like, it's like a mixture of like the NCAA Final Four and Mardi Gras all in one. I'm like, this is unbelievable <laughs> and great concerts and great. So, so yeah, it's not New York City, but the people here love football. It's safe. You know, there's not a place in town where I'm like, well, I'm not, there's not a place here in Lincoln where I'm like, hey guys, don't go there, don't go here. It's a, it's a, the people here care about the team. They care about people. Um, it's safe. It's close to everything. You know, we're, we're in the Big Ten now that goes from East Coast to West Coast, but we only have a two and a half hour flight here, a two and a half hour. Other guys are going to be swinging five, six hours, yeah. West Coast to East Coast, East Coast to West Coast. Like we're in the center part of the country, a quick flight to Chicago, two hour drive to Kansas City. 
I came here and I was like, you know, Lincoln, Lincoln's, Lincoln's what I was kind of looking for. A big city, not just a college town, it's a state capital, and Omaha's fire. I, yeah. I don't care what people say. It's got a great restaurant scene. <laughs> um, so I've, I've really, really, really enjoyed it. I still like going back to New York City every once in a while and getting on the subway. And, yeah. you know, I need a little fix. But, but, but I've, loved, um, I've loved being able to be here and be out in the, in the, on a farm. And then be downtown at a nice restaurant, you know, twenty minute difference. Yeah. Dylan was talking about the uh, the mat drills yeah. <laughs> and talking how serious those were. Some coaches do away with the mat drills. Yeah, especially in this day and age. Yeah, but Why? You, you got them alive. You got them alive and well. You know what's really cool for me is uh, we, there was like a a Twitter thread, and it was players. You know, Jared works for me over here, but, but that, that played for us at Western Carolina. I don't know, twenty years ago. And players from Temple, and players from Baylor, and the players from here, and they were all, they were all making basically making fun of me, you know, because I run the mat drill. Yeah. Like it ain't like I'm like it ain't like I show up. I sit in the mat drill. I'm the first row. Like I run the mat drill. And Sat, who's my OC, who's been with me at Western and Temple. He's the next guy. And then uh, Coop, who did the mat drills as a player, he's one of the guys. So like, if you're coaching the mat drill. If you're on the mat, like you either went through it or you're, you know, you're kind of OOU from way back when. So, yeah. um, but to me, it's a rite of passage. And uh, we have a player, MJ Sherman here. He, uh, you know, he, uh, he came from the University of Georgia, won national championships, you know, and, it, and, and at first was like, kind of like, why are we doing this coach in a very respectful way, but struggled with it. And he had an interview the other day and he was like, you know what? Um, I would never want to go through the mat drills again, but a mat drill, a mat drill makes men, will make a man out of you. And, um, yeah, you can go out there and you can do football drills only and you can run around bags and all that. But, like, all the research, I don't care if you listen to David Goggins, Jocko Willink, you read, I mean, all the research says that our brains get better, they get stronger when we do things we don't want to do. We have to. We have to. We can't, we can't get saturated with dopamine where everything's at our fingertips. And you have to earn and do hard things every single day, not as punishment, but actually as a reward for yourself. So the mat drills, man, they're just eight times the standard's unbelievably high. If you don't do it, we're doing it again the next morning. And when they graduate and come through that, the goal is someday, someday we take the field and our guys look at the other team and they're like, you know what? There's no way you paid the same price we played. There's no way you're out there for three hours in the spring ball like we are. There's no way you have 6 a.m. meetings. There's no way you do mat drills and then do position work afterwards. There's just no way. And if you do, then let's have a good game. And so that's, we're not there yet, but we're pushing it towards that. And look at Dylan, five-star recruit. You know, quarterback, you know, should he lay out and dive in the mat drills? He gets out there. He's doing it. You know, he's doing it. And they will eventually have a brotherhood where they all like, hey, we all did it. I love that. I wonder um, how Nash, how do, how Nash take yeah, the mat Nash has got to dominate, huh? Yeah. He, Nash is. <laughs> you don't want to go with the med ball against Nash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and in fairness, this year, you know, we didn't have Nash do anything. Uh, but Nat, you know, he basically went through his own. I mean, what, he's and, 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 and you know, it's funny with Nat. He, he, um, he, uh, he, uh, and the one chasing three, we did that little, we did those little episodes, little documentary. And he saw about wrestling. And he was like, his dad said, yeah, like he was excited to finally get back to that type of training where you really push yourself. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so he's trying to say wrestling's harder than football. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> was, but he told me, he's like, coach, it's just, and our, and our defensive staff went over and watched wrestling and they came back and they were like, you know, all right, we got it. Like, <laughs> whatever he's doing is enough. And I, God bless him. Like, he showed up every day to Matt Jules with his cleats on, his shirt on. And I'd be like, stand on the side. And he'd watch. But he was there for his brothers, you know. Like, but what he was going through was, was tough, man. Like, Oh, yeah. He, what he was going through was tough. You know, he was losing weight and still lifting and training with us and then going out and fighting for the wrestling team. I mean, you know, we have three guys running track. We have one guy running one guy did wrestling. I mean, we we we, we kind of got some multi sport halftime uh, dunk contest. Fire! Yeah, <laughs> that what that was. I, was. I got dunked. Like, Emmett went up to dunk and he hit me in the back of the head. But I was out there for him, you know. So, but you know what? I think that's so cool for our guys, right? Like, it's one thing to get a bunch of publicity, like for like you know for your name. It's another thing to get publicity for like what you do. And those guys, whether whether they're giving back to the community or they're dunking a basketball halftime, like. It's way different dunking a basketball in the, at the intramural center than in front of like fifteen thousand people yeah. and your heart rate's jumping yeah. out. Your, you know, but you know they look good. It was, but they were throwing it down. Yes, Fedoni was. You know, Fedoni coming off two ACLs. I mean, that went from the foul line. You know, I mean, it was it was really fun to see those guys go out there and get that done, bro. Well, Coach, uh, we appreciate your time. I feel like I had one other thing. 
but I get oh uh <laughs> Uh, uh, Heinrich, we huh? had a pet peeve. We asked him what he loves about Coach Rule and a pet peeve about Coach Rule. <laughs> his pet peeve is, uh, what was his pet peeve? Basically, oh, you get started on something, you're like, hey, it's going to be, guys, just two a quick minutes. little message, quick little two-minute message that turns into like 15 minutes, and then you get the rambling about some story. Because <laughs> you say he got to go to class. Yeah, like, he's like, I'm trying to get to class, minutes. and he ends up running. Hey, this. text Heinrich, tell him I'm going to see him in the office real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's funny because like they, they uh, I can see the guys imitate me, and it's you know, like I don't realize I do some of the things I do, but like the guys at Baylor would imitate me. They'd be like, we're going to go here. And then I see these guys doing the same imitation. I'm like, I must really do that. <laughs> yeah. I guess I really do that. Well, Coach, yeah. we appreciate your time. Nah, I appreciate you guys being here, though. That means a lot that you guys are here. So yeah, Thanks man. for having and Sorry us. for letting you down in Memphis. Gotta, you know what, I though? The record. fact that you're here and the fact that we got the live show tonight, like, that's going to be. That's you wearing be, the jersey? If I can fit into it. You can fit in. I mean, I know they had the stretch fit back in the day, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would have been a different story. But appreciate you.